Hello creatives, it's Lauren Elizabeth here. I hope you're having a wonderful January. This is a super important video for those of you who are struggling with art discouragement, or you're afraid to fail at another painting, or you're struggling to work through the ugly phase. I will be going over all three of those things. In fact, I'll give you five tips to help you work through the ugly phase and how to not bring those toxic emotions and thoughts into the next painting and when to know when to let go of a painting entirely. All right, guys, let's get started. Hi, creatives. My name is Lauren Elizabeth. If you're new here, welcome. I'm a pet and wildlife artist and instructor. I'm doing a 365 days of color challenge. Uh, this is year two and I'm on day 389. Wow. So at the end of December of last year, I was asked to place in this month, January of 2023, my newest artwork in Dukes and Crystal Lake. So excited and I really wanted to add a fox to the collection. I have just been wanting to paint a fox and it just seems like every attempt has not worked out the way I wanted. This next one, I put even more pressure on myself now because I was gonna put it in this, this on display. I felt very discouraged, like the most intense feeling of discouragement that I've experienced in a very long time. Now I felt like I started out super strong. I felt very confident in my idea, the colors I wanted to use. I felt like I had a strong photo. And then every brush stroke I kept adding after that underpainting, I felt more and more discouraged. So if you're not familiar with what the ugly phase is, it's right there after you've applied the underpainting and right when you're starting to uh, apply values, your dark, medium, and lights. It can be a very scary time because you don't have every part of the process mapped out. It's very uncertain. Even if you're watching a tutorial, you'll still experience this ugly phase. Now with this fox painting, I was fully prepared to work through the ugly phase and I did. I worked through the fur that I struggled with. I uh, altered the face that I felt like was a little off. I know that the ugly phase requires those tiny little tweaks and many tiny little tweaks that add up to help us to create that masterpiece. I also know that there's been paintings in the past that I didn't like the background and then when I added a few leaves or flowers, it just came to life. So I did that. I added roses. I added some greenery. I altered the background. It just seemed like every little brushstroke that I added was making me feel worse. And that is what we'll talk about today. When to know when to let go of a painting and to start fresh with a new idea, new canvas, new perspective, and when it's time to actually be patient, take it slow, and work through the ugly phase. So what my goal is and my hope is for you for this video is to help you see the ugly phase as a normal, necessary, good thing, but also to practically and objectively assess your painting so you're not wasting your time, creativity, and energy on a painting that it's time to let go of. All right, so what I do to help me decide whether I should continue on in the ugly phase or start fresh, I asked myself, how much of this painting do I see potential and what percentage? If it's 70% and more, then I'll continue on and keep working. If it's anything less than that, then I will start over. With this fox, I think the only thing I liked was the chest area. I, I really didn't like anything else. I was at like 30% with this fox painting. So that's where I could find peace in the fact that, okay, I would continue wasting my time if I kept working on this fox. I'm sure a lot of people might actually like this fox, but if you're not happy with it as the artist, there's nothing wrong with that. You're the one creating it. This is your painting. You should be happy with it. But that 70% is where you're okay with some imperfections, but you're also okay with the great aspects of your painting. Anytime you're going to any extreme, you're getting into trouble. So you want to be in that in the middle. Give yourself some grace to appreciate the imperfections and where you need to grow, but don't make excuses. Keep improving and be critical so that you can develop your art in the way that you want. All right, so another thing that prevents artists from letting go 
and starting fresh is that fear of failure. They feel that if they start over again, or maybe for the first time that they have failed and that they're a bad artist. Okay, my tip is detach your performance and, and the way you paint from your identity as an artist. That's like rule number one. The beginning of wisdom and growth is accepting that you're imperfect, that you're gonna make mistakes constantly, and it's just this humbling experience every single time you paint. No matter what level artist you are, you're gonna make mistakes, you're gonna solve new problems, you're gonna have paintings that you have to start over on. So you're, you're actually only a failure if you just don't start again and if you just give up entirely. That is the only time you're a failure. Any other time, you are not. All right, so you've made the decision to let go and you're gonna start new. Now, how do we prevent those toxic thoughts, that frustration, that discouragement from going into the next painting and then having to start over again in the next painting? All right, so I'm gonna share my tips on that and then I'm gonna share how to efficiently and effectively work through the ugly phase to your final masterpiece that you are proud of. All right, so do you remember at the beginning of this video, I was talking about this fox. I had multiple attempts that I didn't do well on. I uh, wanted a large painting. I just love foxes. I mean, come on, they're just so awesome. They're like the perfect mix between a cat and a dog. And they have this beautiful red fur coat. Like they're just the most awesomest animals. So I, of course I had to paint a fox. So there you have it. I have three expectations that I put on myself and not, there's a fourth one. I wanted to, I had a deadline to get it done by January. So I had so many chains that I, wrap myself in to have this beautiful fox painting ready to put on display. Unrealistic pressure and expectations that I set on myself going into the painting that affected my creativity, affected my pace, affected my color decisions, affected how I would solve problems. These are things that we, we can't have going into a painting. That leads me to my next point is to go into a painting playfully like a child a child learns so fast and so well because they approach it as a game as play as fun take all expectations off other than just trying to do well that's a good thing we need to like what we create but do it freely and delight in the process like you're having fun you're playing and that leads me to the next point. And just like a child, you expect something great to happen. It helps us to not focus on the past and the mess ups we've done. It also prevents us from worrying about the future. We're already assuming and we've made it up in our mind that this will turn out great. You'll learn something at the least or you'll have this magnificent new grand painting that you created. All right, so my last tip before we talk about how to effectively and efficiently work through the ugly phase, and this one's more tangible, is to be a photo snob. So the reference photos that you're using to paint the animal that you're painting, it needs to be like top-notch, best quality photo. The better the photo, the better the painting. And that good quality photo will also build that confidence so that you don't have any uh, hidden or unknown areas that you have to do a lot of improv. It's very normal for me to go through 10, 20, 50, 100 different photos until I find that one photo that I create a painting from. I try to find photos that have lighting on one side so that it creates contrast, darker one side, a little bit lighter on the other side, not all lit up. I prefer not to paint from photos like that. Uh, crystal clear, uh, accurate coloring and also non blurry. All right. So I have five tips for you to help you work through the ugly face. All right. Tip number one, place more time, attention, creativity, and just focus on the focal points. So that's the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. That's where our human eyes look to first. And then we work our way around my tip number two, even if you can see lots of detail in your reference photo and you're tempted to just start out painting that, don't. Focus on the shapes of the values and placing down the values at the beginning and the middle 
and then leave the details for the very end. I call it the details phase. And yes, I know I said to make sure the eyes and the nose and the mouth are very detailed, but do that slowly. You need to build up layers first before adding the detail over top. Third tip is to expect the ugly phase to last almost the entire process. Like that's normal. From the time you apply that underpainting to pretty much that final details phase, that's like how long the ugly phase lasts. So what I'll do sometimes in this phase is I'll rush or I'll start being overly critical or I'll just assume that I'm doing it wrong because it's taking so long to start looking better. This is where you have to just sit in the unknown. You take a deep breath. You don't rush. You accept that this process is worth it and it good art takes a while and that every artist of every level goes through the ugly phase. You just playfully, one brush stroke at a time, allow the process to unfold. Tip number four, let the mistakes develop your artist style. That is honestly what led me to the two different colored eyes and the accent colors that I add at the end to my animals. I recently created a video on how to find your artist style. I'll link that down below. But that's what I mean about expecting something good. We will have this great exploration of new things, new colors, new ideas come along as we paint. Not at the beginning, uh, not something that we can prepare for or plan for. It just comes out of us as we're creating. There has been many, many times where I was painting through the ugly phase in this, what they call the flow state. I didn't feel like it was coming together perfectly, but I knew that the process was just kind of unfolding with each brushstroke. Letting go is the beginning of feeling in control. Does that make sense? All right, tip number five is making sure that you are stepping back from your work constantly and seeing the big picture. I know that's probably something you already know and you might have heard it many, many times, but let that sink in right now. You need to actually get up from your spot, step back, look at your painting. Don't hone in on small details. Look at the big picture. And then even while you're standing, you can add a little bit here, a little bit there. Oh, all right, creatives. I know that was a lot. I know I often say that painting should be this fun, relaxing, stress-free process, but it honestly can be very stressful. The ugly phase can feel very uncomfortable. And that is exactly why I wanna offer my help if you need it and when you need it. I've created what's called the Online Animal Art Masterclass, full of tons of direction and inspiration and guidance on acrylic pet and wildlife portraiture. And I really focus on technique and color while also being encouraging, practical and focusing on reducing stress. This is why I got into animal art guys because I really was looking for a healthy outlet to help me overcome addiction and it was a helpful tool that really got me to the healthy Lauren that I am today. Now this isn't for everyone but I have designed it for beginner, intermediate and the advanced level animal artist. If you've never picked up acrylic paint and the artist who has been doing this for years. I also have classes to help you sell and make profit off of your animal portraits. And I also have just uploaded my new and improved creative color guide. I'm also currently working on a animal fur guide going over all different types of animal fur. So guys, if this would bless you or a friend, I have links to that down below. But I just thank you so much for watching. Please let me know how it can help you and serve you and encourage you through your own art. Don't stop creating. Have a wonderful day. Bye.